Hello and welcome to our training today. Today we're diving into 10 awesome business credit lines that you can get even during the recession. So by the end of this training, you're going to know at least 10 different kind of credit lines that you're able to get right now, no matter what state the economy's in, to be able to get the money you need to fund your business. For those that don't know me, my name is Ty Crandall. I'm CEO here at Credit Suite. At Credit Suite, this is what we do. We help business owners obtain capital, work over a thousand different lending sources to help match you with the right lender and product. We also help you build business credit for your EIN that's not linked to your personal social and also help you improve all aspects of your fundability just to help you get more money. So if we can help you along the way, our numbers at the bottom of our slides, 877-600-2487. You can also get approved directly at creditsuite.com forward slash get funding. So let's start with the basics. A lot of you already know the answer to this. What is a credit line? So when we talk about credit line, of course, we're talking about an agreement between a financial institution like a bank uh, or a private investor establishing a maximum loan amount a borrower can access. And then you can get those funds anytime you want to, as long as you don't exceed that maximum. So you might get a credit line for $150,000 and you can use that credit line as long as you don't exceed that a limit that is actually put upon you in this example, that $150,000. Now, unlike with SBA loans, money does not have to be used for a specified purpose. A lot of business loans out there from SBA, from private investors, etc., you've got to actually use the money for a particular purpose. You have to actually have a specific use of funds and the use of funds must work within the actual guidelines that that lender has. But credit lines, you don't have to do that. You can use the money for anything you want to use it for and then you can reuse that credit line as well. So you could use it, you could pay it down and then you can reuse it. And a credit card is kind of a form of this. Um, the biggest difference between credit cards and credit lines is that a credit card you know, you get punished if you try to take the physical cash out. Whereas a credit line, you don't have that. You can usually get in, you can get the cash out at the going interest rate of the credit card or line. Unlike credit cards where you might have to pay like a 20% premium to take that cash out. Now, there's a lot of unique advantages of credit lines. First of all, just flexibility. You're only paying interest on what you're actually using on that money. If you were to come out and get a loan, for example, the problem is you start paying the principal, the interest, everything the minute you get started on that. Okay, so the nice thing about a credit line is that you're only paying interest on what you're actually using. Okay, and you can reuse them as we talked about. You could get a credit line for 150 grand, put 50 grand on it, pay the 50 grand off, and then reuse that credit line. And that's why these are the most requested types of pro financial products in the business world. Everybody wants these, uh, but a lot of them are tough to qualify for. That's why we're here today. A lot of them require really good credit. A lot of them are available with the big banks. They're not ones people can typically get approved for, especially in a recession, which is why we want to dive into the ones that are available for you um, as well, because not a lot of people know about the ones that are available. A lot of them, you know, might not know that there's ones for bad credit. There's ones for if you're a startup. There's ones if you don't have financials. If you go to your bank, you're used to having to provide all those things. But in this world, you don't need to. There's a lot of different options you have available that will just that will work even if you don't have those things and even in a down economy, okay? So a lot of cool stuff and a lot of people are chiming in and saying hello in the chat and YouTube. So hello to everybody and thanks for coming in. So here's how you get money for a business. I'm gonna teach you my three C's capital acquisition formula. It's pretty simple. Okay, lenders look at one of three factors to determine if you're gonna get approved for any kind of financing. What I mean by that is if you want a loan, if you want a credit line, you must meet one of three requirements. If you don't, there's not a lot of options available for you. But at the end today, I will talk about an option or more that will work for you even if you don't have these three. But these three C's are cash flow, collateral, and credit. So what happens is if you want to get money for your business, there's a lot of money you can get based on one of these strengths. Okay, but if you don't have one of these strengths, then the problem is, is you're typically not able to get approved for funding. Okay, this is where, for example, business credit becomes a really good solution because it doesn't require any of these. So if we look at this, cash flow is just the fact that you're bringing in consistent money in your business. Collateral could be a lot of different things, some of which we'll talk about today. Credit is good personal credit from you or a guarantor. Now, the nice thing is, is if you have more than one of these things, well, then you can get even more financing. And if you have all three, 
three of the C's, that's when you get into SBA loans. But that is also the problem. A lot of people try to go to their bank to get capital and they don't have all three of these. They don't have really good cash flow and tax returns that show it. They don't have collateral that's equivalent to the value of the money that they're looking to get. They don't have good credit, personal credit, good business credit, good bank credit, meaning they keep money in the bank. And so because they don't have these criteria, they can't get approved. And that's where what we're going to talk about today becomes so important because that's when alternative lenders become very, very, very important. So let's talk about my number one favorite, which is the credit line hybrid. I talk about this a lot because today of all the lenders that we work with, of all the financial products that I see on a regular basis and that we vet, this is the best product I've ever seen because, well, I'll show you why. Well, those, one of the benefits of the credit line hybrid is that it's 0% interest on this for about 18 months. And the cool thing is, is you could take cash out of the credit line. So when I often talk to people and they say they want a credit line, not a credit card, I always ask, what's the difference between the two? And to date, nobody's been able to come up and really even tell me. They're like, well, I don't really know. Well, in my mind, the difference, as I mentioned, is that a credit line, you could take cash out without paying a hefty fee. With a credit card, one of the benefits is you can get these 0% rates for up to 18 months. Well, I call this a credit line hybrid because it's a hybrid between those two worlds. You get the benefit of 0% that you get with a credit card, but you could take the cash out at 0%. That's insane. Like this is the only product that exists with. So you can imagine in times like this with coronavirus or in a recession or as starting a business, keeping your payments really low is very, very, very important. Well, you can't keep your payments lower than paying 0% interest. It's the lowest you can get. So that's my number. That's why it's my number one recession, my recession credit line. Because again, the payments are as low as you're going to get on any kind of credit card or credit line. Now you can get approved for up to 150 grand in your first round of funding. You can come back about every six months and get even more money. And again, as I mentioned, that 0% rate is for six to 18 months. And then normal credit card rates apply after that. So business credit card rates range from anywhere between, you know, six and 15% on average. So after that 18 month period, you'll pay, you know, what you normally do on regular credit cards. Now there's no documentation. It's called no doc. So you don't need tax returns. You don't need bank statements. And here's why this matters a lot in the recession, because coronavirus, as you can imagine, a lot of people's revenues stopped or really became dramatically lower than it was. Well, if they're looking at bank statements or they're looking at tax returns, well, not tax returns, but if you're looking at bank statements, you would see that drop. If we get your tax returns for 2020, you're going to see a lot of people's revenues be less than they were in 2019. That creates all kinds of problems. In the lending world, nobody wants to lend you money when you're on a decline. That's all kinds of concern. But in this world, it's no doc. So no matter what's happening with your revenue, you're still able to come in and get approved. Okay. Um, so that becomes a really, really, really big deal. Now, you also need to come in and know that you're not going to have to provide any other kind of income documentation either. Okay, so it's stated income. It's no doc. Now, this works for high-risk industries. And excuse my graphic for overcoming the uh, overriding those words, but you can basically get this even if you're in a high-risk industry and you can still keep your payments low, which is not common with a lot of different kind of financing that's out there today. Now, you could typically get approved for about five to eight times the amount of the highest credit limit account that you have now. So to give you an example here, if your highest credit limit credit card now is you have a Chase credit card with a $10,000 limit. With this program, you can get five to eight times that amount or about fifty dollars to $80,000 in total money. And you'll get about five to eight individual credit lines. Now, a lot of benefits here. One of the benefits is, is that that creates competition. Okay. Most credit issuers, excuse me, all credit issuers know that the highest limit credit card you have or credit line is the one that you're more inclined to use more than any other. And I'm sure you're that you're like me, right? Like I have my, my wallet in my hand right now. And in my wallet are my three highest limit credit cards. I keep one for my business and two for personal. Okay. So every, mo most people are the same way. If I get a credit card in the mail today, that's a higher limit than the one that I have in my wallet, I replace it. Because again, if I'm getting a lower rate and a higher limit, that 
that is the card I carry with me. So because of that, when you have multiple credit lines for business or credit cards, then the other ones wanna be the highest limit because they wanna be the one that you use the most. So having more of these lines helps create competition and helps you get your limits increased higher and higher every six months as you go because it creates that competition. Now, a lot of these report to the business credit reporting agency. So not only are you getting credit lines you could really use, but you're also building business credit at the same time. Now, this is very important because a lot of credit cards you get don't report to the business credit reporting agencies at all. Even worse, some of them like Capital One Spark card or any Capital One credit card reports to both. It reports on your consumer and your commercial credit report. And that's a real problem because 30% of your consumer FICO scores utilization and you use a lot of credit in a business. So if you have credit that reports on your personal credit reports, then it's easy to max out that credit card for the business even if you pay it off every month, and then that still damages your personal credit. So these reports, the business credit reporting agencies, giving you really two benefits. You're building business credit, and you're also not adversely affecting your consumer credit at the same time. Okay, so a lot of different reasons that you wanna uh, get any kind of credit, this one or any other, that reports the business credit reporting agencies, not the consumer. Now, that being said, you have a choice with these. So when we help clients get approved, you have two options. You have what's called max funding. And max funding includes standard cards and business credit reporting cards. And the difference are this, the business credit card and reporting cards report to the business credit reporting agencies. The standard cards report to the consumer credit reporting agencies. So you'll have a decision. I only want cards that report on my business credit reports or I'd like to get the maximum amount of funding I can, even knowing some of that is consumer reporting. Then I'll use all my business cards first and I have the consumer reporting ones there as an emergency backup if I need them, okay? So again, it's nice to be able to have the options with this program. Program. Now, what happens is a finance source is basically applying on your behalf and securing the best credit cards that you're going to get with the highest limits out there. The best credit line, I say credit line, credit cards with credit line capability. And again, by that, I mean you get the benefit of 0%, but you can take the cash out of the cards at 0%. Now, this company's not a lender they're, or a card issuer. They're actually working as experts in the face of or in the space of getting you these kind of commercial credit cards. Okay, so they were to apply to get you the most credit credit with the most points, with the lowest rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they do it all at once. So you're able to typically get five to eight times the amount of the credit that you were able to get on your own. If you tried to go in and get a Bank of America credit card now, and then you wanted to get a Chase, and then you wanted to get a Wells Fargo, what's going to happen is the more of these that you get, then the problem is, is that the fewer of them will approve you. When Bank of America sees that Wells Fargo put an inquiry on your credit report, they're either, just a day ago, they're either not going to approve you or they're going to approve you for a reduced amount. So what they'll do is look at your entire profile, find the best sources, go all at once and apply so the other inquiries don't affect your actual approval and that's what gets you max funding. And the nice thing is, is they do a soft inquiry to qualify you. So they don't even look at you. There's no inquiry on your credit report to even look initially to see how much they can get you approved for. So if you, for example, and I've got our, our funding link at the bottom here, creditsuite.com forward slash get funding and 877-600-2487 is our number. If you gave us a call and said, look, I want that credit line hybrid, then what would happen is we get you to the funding source same day. Typically you're getting a pre-approval. You're going to have an option of both standard and business cards or just business cards. And then you're able to move forward with whichever option that you'd want. And that, that doesn't require an inquiry on your credit report until you you actually go through and get that money. Now, Judith says, I started a business on November 19th, uh, 2019. How can I get a credit card for a small, new small business? This is a great program for that, Judith. Now, we'll talk about some others that can work for you, but this is great because it's no doc. So it means you can get it as a startup. Now, as I mentioned, you're able to get about five to eight times the amount of your highest credit limit account. You're going to want to have one at least credit card open now with a $2,000 limit on it. Okay. And you're going to need to have good credit credit in order to qualify, about a 680 FICO score or higher. Now, if you have one 680 credit score with TransUnion, 
your Equifax and Experian are much lower, it's not going to work. The one thing that this program needs to get you approved is good credit. Okay. And if you don't have good credit, well, then the great news is you can use a guarantor instead, a family member, a friend, an investor. Over half of the funding we do on this program comes from guarantors, not the individual. So the person doesn't have good credit. They have bad credit. And then they go to get a guarantor to be the signer. And remember, if you're getting business cards, those cards will still help you build business business credit won't report on your guarantor's credit report and make it much easier for you to be able to extract money from one of those sources. Look, 75% of business owners start a business and get the money that they need to start from family and friends. So instead of going to dad to get 150 grand, it's easier to use dad's credit to get 150,000 credit lines, especially if those credit lines only report on your business credit and don't report on dad's. So it's just an easier way to tap into guarantors as well as, or your own good credit in order to qualify, but fantastic for startups because guarantors are welcome, because you don't need to supply tax returns, because uh, you don't need to actually supply any revenue verification at all. Okay. No derogatory reporting for the last two years in your credit report, no bankruptcies, one card with a $2,000 limit um, or a car, a mortgage, something like that. And your utilization should be low. Like you need to have lower than 40% utilization. Now, if you're a little higher than that, then our sources actually have pay down bridge loans that they can help you get the money you need to pay down those credit cards to qualify. And you need to have like less than six inquiries over the last six months. If you have six inquiries or more, it doesn't mean you won't get approved. It just means you'll get approved for less money. So this is important for one very big reason. It goes to show you the importance of inquiries on your credit report. You never want to put an inquiry on your credit report unless you have a really good chance that you have a really good idea that you're going to get approved because with this program, even one inquiry could cost you $20,000, $25,000. So it just goes to show you the value of those actual inquiries. So my number one favorite by far, easiest to qualify, works for startups, 0% interest, builds your business credit. I mean, and no doc, it's got everything that you really would want to see uh, to be able to get you the funding you need at low, at great terms. Now, SBA has about five different co- credit lines that they call cap lines. Okay, now cap lines is basically their umbrella program of what they classify credit lines under. So they have five different credit lines that they put under what they call cap lines. And these loans, these lines are available up to $5 million. Okay, the qualification is the same with all SBA programs. Now, I love this because these credit lines are really high. Like we get clients two hundred and fifty or five hundred thousand dollar credit lines with this program. It's fantastic. But what I don't like about this program is you've got to meet SBA's requirements, which means you need good credit. You need at least two years worth of tax returns that show revenue growth. You're going to need to also have some kind of collateral in your business, account receivables or inventory equipment. You can even use your home as an asset as collateral, but you've got to have all three cash flow, credit, and collateral to get these credit lines. But It's a great way to go if you do have these cap lines. So let's take a look at these five different cap lines that they have. Now, I'm not going to explain and read all these to you, but basically they all kind of have their own unique purpose. You have a seasonal line, just what it sounds like. In a seasonal business, let's say you you are a uh, you know you run a business at a ski slope. Well, that's obviously a seasonal business. I mean, part of the year you're not even open. The skiing season even isn't even happening. So a seasonal credit line is for businesses that have seasons where they're really busy. And then a lot of the other rest of the year, they're not busy. So they expect to see these fluctuations in your bank statements and your revenue. Then you've got contract lines and you've got builder lines as well. And these contract and builder lines, these really have to do with construction companies, general contractors, et cetera. And these are really meant to bridge the gap between when you're providing the service and when you're getting paid. So for example, if you're a plumber and you're putting plumbing in new homes, you're not going to get paid by that builder right away. There's a lag between when you perform the service and you get paid. And these kind of lines are for that purpose. And then there's also a a working capital line. This is just what it sounds like. When anybody says working capital loan or line, it means you could just use it for any reason you really want to use it for. And that's what a working capital line is. Now, there's about four here. The fifth one isn't here, but the fifth one really has to do if you're accepting people's, uh, uh, accepting credit terms from customers. So if customers are, you know, buying a product and not paying you until later, 
Well, then that's when their fifth line comes in, which is of use as well. So you've got four of them that have a specific use. The one I just mentioned is if you're letting people pay you at a later point in time. The contract and builder line, or if you're in those construction type of industries, the seasonal line, of course, is for seasonal businesses. And that working capital line is then for everything else that you're able to use there as well. So let's talk about an AI credit line. This is my second favorite credit line that's out there. And there's a couple of them that really fit into this kind of program. Now, as I mentioned, if we can help you with any of these or we work with over a thousand lenders and I mean every legitimate funding program that's out there, then give us a ring or go to creditsuite.com forward slash get funding to get approved. We'll talk to you more about these programs. We'll help you get approved. You can also get approved and speak with our team directly at creditsuite.com forward slash get funding. So on this AI credit line, what we're using is artificial intelligence. And here's why this is nice. They're using basically AI to go in and underwrite the loan for them. And so what's nice about that is you don't have to supply all this documentation that you had to before. So it used to be that you had to supply bank statements to be able to get approved. Well, with this AI credit line, what they're actually doing is they're coming in and they're electronically looking at your bank statement. They have you enter your login information for your bank account. Then what they're doing is they're using that to actually come in and underwrite the deal. So what's nice about this is it gives you an almost immediate credit decision. I mean, when we send you over for this product, you can get approved typically within an hour and fund same day. Your credit line's available to you same day. Now, approval amounts are up to $150,000, and there's two different kind of credit lines here. There's one that goes up to hundred grand, and that $100,000 one doesn't, really, doesn't have any specific credit requirements at all. Then there's one that goes to $150,000, and you have to have a 620 FICO score to get approved for the other one. Now, you got to be in business for six months or more, and the approvals are based based on revenue. So they're going to want to know, uh, they want to know, you know, how much do you have and how well do you manage your bank account? That's what they're going to look at. They want consistent revenue. They want responsible bank account management. So anything that's looking at your bank account, they're just wanting to see how do you manage your bank account? Like, do you have more money coming in than going out, which is called positive cash flow? Do you have non-sufficient funds that show that you're overdrawing your account? Do you have a positive ending bank balance at the end of each month or is it a negative ending bank balance? Those those are the kind of things they're really looking at to determine if you should be approved. If you manage your bank bank account responsibly, you're typically going to get approved. And the way these approvals work, you'll get a very small approval initially, less than 10 grand. Then if you're willing to supply tax returns and your tax returns are good, they'll bump you up to like $30,000 that we've seen. Then if you use that credit line and you go back to them for another bump, they'll typically bump you up to $100,000 and get you approved that way. We have a $100,000 credit line with this product and we use it all the time. When coronavirus hit, we put a lot on that credit line. We've now paid it off, but we really relied on this credit line to make sure that we were okay as we kind of got stability in this new environment. So we absolutely love this credit line. Okay, so a couple different ways you can go, as I mentioned, uh, and again, the nice thing is it's based on revenue. So even if your credit's not the best, you can still get approved. Now, Leonard says, can more than one guarantor be used for credit line hybrid? It can, they can. And the more guarantors you have, the more money you can also qualify for. So great question, Leonard. Thanks for asking. So let's talk about revenue credit lending uh, line. Well, some lenders actually offer both a loan and a credit line if your revenue is consistent that you're able to use. So you're able to get a loan and then you're able to get an extra line of credit for about twenty dollars to $25,000 as well. So you're able to get a loan for about 12% of your annual revenue. Then you're also able to come in and get approved for a credit line on top of that. So you get a loan and a credit line. Now, you have to have consistent revenue here. So even if your revenue dropped during a recession, that's okay. You know, COVID-19 drops your revenue, that's okay. But your revenue now needs to be consistent. It's the consistency of the revenue that they're really looking for. And it's harder to qualify for than a normal merchant cash advance. But again, the benefit here is that you're getting a credit line on top of a loan and all you really need for approval is consistent cash flow is revenue. So 
to go back here and look at where we've been through number one through four. The credit line hybrid was strictly based on credit. Remember our C3C formula, credit, cash flow, collateral. Number one was based on credit. Number two, the AI credit lines was based on cash flow. Okay, then we came in in the last one and we actually, actually number two we got into was SBA. These need all three. Then we got into AI credit line, which is based on cash flow. And this one is also based on cash flow as well. Okay, now the funds can be used to improve the business is what they really want to see that you're going to use it to grow the business. Uh, and again, and they're going to look typically at this point at your profit margins and they want to see that you've got profit margins of about 20% in order to be able to qualify. And they also want to see that you want to have $10,000 a month in regular revenue. Now you need to have a year time in business, 500 plus FICO score. So it doesn't work for startups and they're oftentimes going to want to see tax returns as well. Okay. But the nice thing is, is this is about one of the only real credit lines out there that's really solid. That's just not based on con good consumer credit. You know, I showed you the last two, the last one, the AI credit line and this one, you don't need good credit to get approved. You just need consistent cash flow to get approved. And if you have that, it's a really, 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 really good product that I love quite a bit. Now there's also what's called an account receivable credit line, which is very interesting because the way that account receivables work is this is that account receivables means somebody pays you on terms. So let me give you an example here. Uh, let's say somebody buys a thousand dollar product from you and you let them pay you for over nine months time. Well, that's called an account receivable. They owe you the money. They're just paying it over a set period of time. Well, in that example, you would wait nine months to get your full thousand dollars. Well, the way the AR credit line works is they would take your outstanding account receivables and they would get you a credit line to leverage against those receivables. It's a phenomenal way to go because instead of waiting nine months to get money, you could access your money right away through a working capital credit line so you could use the money before the customer even pays you, which is really, really cool. Approvals up to $100,000. The lender's going to use AI, so they're going to plug right into your software like QuickBooks to see how you manage your account receivables, and they're looking to see that you have a good system to manage your receivables, that you actually know how much money people owe you. Now, I don't expect you to know that off the top of your head. I don't know how much our customers owe us off the top of our head, but if you plugged into our accounting software, you would know that. So they're making sure that you have a responsible way of managing your account receivables, and as I mentioned, you can get up to $100,000 dollars with this program. So remember the three C's. This one is based on the third C, collateral. The collateral here, the asset you're pledging as collateral is account receivables. So what's nice about the three C formula is you only need one C, not the other two. So remember credit line hybrid, we talked about all you need is good credit from you or a guarantor, but you don't need cash flow. You don't need to verify it. It's no doc. You don't need collateral. With this one, you need collateral of account receivables, but you don't need good credit and you don't need cash flow. You just need the collateral. So that's the beautiful thing about that three C formula is you only need one C, not the others. With this one, collateral is the strength. So cash cash flow and credit don't matter. Really good for a recession, especially if your cash flow has actually decreased. Okay. Now rates are a half a percent to 0.7% per week outstanding. Here's what this means. It means if you keep the money outstanding for six months, well, then you could definitely have some, uh, you could definitely have a higher interest rate. You actually have up to six months to pay back the money. So they're going to leave, they're going to basically give you up to six months to pay back that credit line. And your payment can be pretty high if you go that full six months with that money outstanding. But the opposite is also true. You know, so I had a guy come in, it was a buddy of mine that owns a credit repair business. And he said, look, I, I'm high risk. I'm in credit repair. I, I, I know I'm high risk. Go ahead and get me one of those merchant cash advances. And I said, wait a second, let me, let me try another route first, because that would be like a 45% interest rate. I think I can get you on this credit line. And we got him on this credit line and he was able to get the 30,000 that he needed. He only needed it for two weeks. He only paid 1% interest on what he needed the money for. Then he paid the credit line off. And now he still uses that credit line on a regular basis.
So if you're using this for short-term purposes, very beneficial because your rates are lower than anything else you're going to find because it's based on how many weeks that money is outstanding. Now, it's an actual real working line of credit. Remember, I talked about real credit lines are hard to find because a lot of people consider credit cards credit lines, but this is a flat out credit line. Okay. And initial approvals are usually less than 50 grand. And again, if you want to get up to the 100 grand, they're typically going to ask for tax returns. I gave you our example where they approved us for less than six grand initially, then they bumped us to 30, then they bumped us to 100 once we provided tax returns and we're using that. And we still use it today. It's, it's, it's literally, um, there are a couple of these are my favorite and these that use AI, these account receivables and the other one based on revenue are two of the best out there. Let's talk about peer-to-peer -peer lines of credit. A lot of people don't know what peer-to-peer -peer lending is, so let's talk about what happens with peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer is when private investors pull their money together, and then what's happened is that money is lent to you. So a simple example here is Lending Club or Prosper. Prosper and Lending Club were the original and the biggest in the space. I think Lending Club accounts for 45% of all lending that takes place in the personal and business space. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is both available for businesses and personal financing as well. And what happens happens with peer-to-peer -peer lending is private investors are pulling their money together. So think of it like this. Um, I put in $500. You put in $500. A bunch of our friends put in $500. They take our $500 increments. They add it together with other investors. Then they, they pull that money together and then they lend it to somebody through a credit line or a loan. So what happens is in this case, it's easier to get approved for than a loan at a, or a bank because you're dealing with a private investor, not an actual lender. So it's easier to qualify. You only need like a 620 FICO score to get approved for peer-to-peer -peer lending. As I mentioned, there's several of them that are out there. Prosper, Lending Club, Upstart, Street Shares are the most popular. But here's what's cool. Prosper is the big, is the, the, the first in the space. Lending Club's the biggest. Upstart works with startups. That's why they're called Upstart. So Upstart really loves you if you graduated college, if you have a college degree, if you're if you're in a young generation like a millennial, Upstart is a great way to go. They love millennials. They love college graduates. Street Shares works with veterans. So Street Share is a great way to go uh, with veterans. They even have a Patriot Express program. So if you're a vet like I am, then you want to go with Street Shares because Street Shares really caters to veterans and they were founded by veterans as well to give a really good financial alternative uh, to people that are veteran-owned businesses. So look, I've learned in my time that you're better to work with a private individual lending money than a lending institution, which is why peer-to-peer -peer is so powerful because you're dealing with private investors instead of dealing with an actual uh, big lending source uh, such as a bank or an alternative lender. So securities line of credit. This is where you're using stocks and bonds as collateral to get a credit line. Cash flow doesn't matter. Personal credit doesn't matter. You can borrow as much as 90% of the value of your stocks with an interest rate as low as 5%. Still earn interest on the stocks. Now, this is a really cool alternative even if you don't have stocks, but your family does. So let me give you a real example of how I would use this. And this is exactly what I would do. Let's say I need money. I need 50 grand to either start a business or to save my business or whatever it may be. And I'm to a point where I'm going to go to my dad for help. Okay. If I was in this real world situation, what I would do is this. I would go with the securities line of credit because I'm able to go to my dad. And instead of expecting my dad to get me 50 grand, which by the way, if I asked my dad for 50 grand, he would sell his stocks to give me that money. That's what he would do. He would sell his stocks to give me the 50 grand. The problem with that is, is that if his stocks are down, like the stock market's down right now with coronavirus, right? So he would lose his butt. He put, you know, a bunch of money in the value of his stock is down because of coronavirus, then it would make it really hard because for him to give me that 50 grand, he'd lose way more than 50 because, you know, it might've been a hundred grand, but then the value of his stocks is down. So now for him to give me 50, you know, because I'm hitting him at a point where stocks are down because of the recession, then, then it would be harder for him to actually be able to part with that money. But if I came in and said, dad, look, I need 50 grand for my business. And here's the deal. Here's my plan. 
I've already, you know, here's all the things that I can prove to you that I'm going to succeed if I get the 50 grand. I feel extremely confident. Here's why I feel confident. And instead of you giving me $50,000, what I want you to do is pledge your stocks as collateral for me. I can get a 5% credit line and borrow as much as 90% of the stock so I can get my 50 grand. And dad, the best part is you're still earning interest on those stocks. You don't even notice a difference. The only time it will hurt you is if I default and I don't don't pay that actual credit line. So you see what I'm saying? It's it's much easier to get my money from my dad using his stocks as collateral than it is for me to actually get the 50 grand from my dad in cash. So stocks, bonds, uh, a 401k, IRA, any of those can work for this purpose. Stocks and bonds, you can get up to 90%. And with 401ks and IRAs, you're able to get up to 100% of the value of those as well. Inventory credit lines. So this is where you're using existing inventory as collateral to get financing. Now, there's two ways you can go here. There's uh, You have a half a million dollars in inventory now. There's also a brand new way out there that uses crowdfunding to fund your inventory. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you are an Amazon seller. Let's say that you sell products on Amazon. Well, you could actually get 100% of the money you need to buy your Amazon inventory with no money out of pocket with this kind of financing. Then as you sell your inventory on Amazon, you're able to then pay back the money that you borrowed to get it. Pretty cool, right? I mean, it opens up a lot of doors. Now, that won't work for startups. That example I just gave you, you'd have to show that your business has generated 150 grand a year, so they don't want you to be doing this just to start an Amazon business. The same as this one. You know, the other inventory financing credit line, you'd have to have a half million dollars in inventory. So two products. One would require a half million dollars in inventory. The other wouldn't require a half million, but you'd need to have 150,000 in past experience of selling products. Either way, a great way to leverage finance, to leverage leverage inventory to get financing. Uh, with this product, you need a half a million dollars. You need to have, you can get a credit line for 50% of the value of your inventory. And again, five to 15% interest. But again, another option where you're able to use crowdfunding the same. The question is, is, is your strength that you have an asset like uh, inventory as collateral? And remember, as I mentioned, since collateral is your strength, credit and cash flow don't matter. So, so far, I've given you options all the way around. I've given you options if credit's your strength. I've given you options if cash flow is your strength. I've given you options if collateral is your strength. I've given you options with SBA cap lines where all three of them are your strength. So let's start up about startup credit lines. Wells Fargo has a great one of these. I love it. And they call it the small business advantage. You don't need tax returns. Okay, 680 FICO. You need good credit to get approved. And they're going to charge you whatever the prime interest rate is plus 1.75%. And you can get a credit line from five to $100,000. But you've got to have a Wells Fargo account. Now, uh, slower processing with COVID-19 issues, obviously, because they're dealing with a lot of PPP loans from SBA right now. Okay. But again, a really good way to go. I love Wells Fargo's startup credit line. Not a lot of banks offer credit lines for startups. And here's the actual approval link. It's wellsfargo.com forward slash biz forward slash business dash credit forward slash lines dash of dash credit. So, and again, you can also put startup credit line with Wells Fargo and Google that. Uh, that's another really good program that I think works well for startups. And again, credit is your strength here, uh, not cash flow, not collateral, and how much you get will be based on how high your existing revolving credit limits are right now. Now, there's a lot of alternative lenders, and what alternative lenders are is they're not your big banks. They're not your Bank of America. They're not your Chase, your Wells Fargo. They're alternative what are called fintech lenders, and these guys are like alternative, a lot of online lenders, basically. These lenders don't really house retail uh, locations like you see a Wells Fargo of the world. They they actually are, uh, are online only. They're fintech. But they offer credit lines up to $150,000. Um, usually, they're going to want tax returns to get approved P&L and balance sheet if you're borrowing over one hundred grand. But 7 to 10% interest is what they're looking for. And with this one, they're looking for two of the three Cs. They want consistent cash flow and they want good credit of you or a guarantor. So if you or a guarantor has good credit and cash flow, then this is a great way to go. Because remember, as I told you, if you're working with private individuals, you have a much better chance of getting approved than if you're actually working with an actual bank. It's much harder to get approved. Now, I went through 10 
But I also want to talk a little bit about business credit as well, and here's why. Because business credit is a catch-all. So as I mentioned, the business credit really has a purpose either way. If you're trying to get any of the 10 I just mentioned, by having established business credit, you're going to get better terms, more money and lower interest rates. But if you don't have one of the C's, if you don't have good credit, if you don't have cash flow, if you don't have a guarantor that has good credit, you don't have collateral and you don't have a guarantor that has collateral, well, then you're still able to build business credit. Okay, you can do that to get the money you need. You don't need collateral. You don't need cash flow. You don't need credit. And by building this, it makes you more fundable. It makes it easier to get lines of credit and loans. And there's no personal credit check. Your credit doesn't matter because they don't even look at it. There's no personal guarantee. And you can start to get it pretty fast. You can start to get vendor credit right away, revolving store credit at places like Amazon and Walmart in about 60 days. And then you're able to get Visa card, MasterCard, auto financing all in about six months time uh, total. So this is a great way to go because you start, you get vendors. Vendors are like Uline and Quill and Granger, And, you know, our clients have access to vendors that give them SEO and marketing and website building services. So you're getting stuff you really need and buying it all on credit. Then that credit reports to the business credit reporting agencies. And then that establishes a credit profile and score. Then you use that to come in and get like revolving store credit cards at places like Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, Sam's Club, Office Depot, Staples, Best Buy, Apple, uh, you know, Amazon, Walmart, almost every major retailer. And that's important because when you're growing a business, then you know, as well as I do, most stuff that you need for that business can easily be purchased from places like uh, Walmart and Amazon. Then when you build that, get that credit, the next stage is is uh, vehicles. You can get, you know, GM, Ally Financial, Toyota, Ford will all lease vehicles in your business name without a personal guarantee and without a personal credit check. And then you also, on top of that, can get a uh, high limit Visa card and MasterCards, all without a personal guarantee and credit check as well. So a lot of different credit lines we talked about today. Some are based on FICO. Some are based on collateral. Some require time in business. Some require tax returns, as we talked about. Uh, but again, the nice thing is, is that I've went through a bunch of examples that are based on different strengths, even business credit, which requires no strength, that all can work for you to get the money that you need. Now, if you need money for your business, well, we work with every legitimate funding program and we pile them in one place and you never pay us fees to help. What happens when you work with our team is we help help place you with the right lender or broker that can get you the money and we don't charge you a dime of money on our end to do that. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to pay them a normal interest rate or a fee or whatever you pay lenders, you're still going to pay, but we negotiate that down and get you lower rates and terms because we get you a volume discount, meaning we use the volume of funding we do to get you discounts and we'll even spell it, spell, you know, kind of put together a blueprint for you per se uh, that will help you get up to SBA loans in the longer term, lower limit loans, or the lower interest rate credit lines and the higher loan amount credit lines that you can get from SBA. Our goal is this, that you never need to look for money again. So if we can help you uh, with business credit, with financing, give us a ring at 877-600-2487 or creditsuite.com forward slash get funding. We're here to help. And then if you like this training, well, then do me a favor, like the video. If you don't mind, I, I see the likes in real time. And that lets YouTube know that this content actually has value and that I'm not in here trying to pitch you and sell you a bunch of stuff. And then it lets YouTube then show this to more video to more people to get more people of this information. And I really appreciate that. And then also subscribe to our channel. You know, if you subscribe to our channel, then that way, and there's, when you subscribe, there's a little button now right beside the subscribe button that asks you if you want to be notified when we go live, just click it. You do. We go live on YouTube a couple times a week and deliver this kind of content. So that way you can be notified. Notified and go to creditsuite.com, the top right of our page. You'll find our Facebook link where we go live on Facebook a couple times a week. We have Twitter and Instagram where we have daily tips on there as well. And we've also got a podcast with a few hundred thousand downloads, so very popular. So you can listen on your go on the go and get all kinds of information about getting money for your business. And we interview all kinds of experts on all kinds of topics that are very beneficial to business owners. You can get all those links at the top of our website, creditsuite.com. Um, so that it, I've answered all the questions along the way. If you have any other questions, give us a ring 877-600-2487 or email us at info at credit And don't forget to visit us online at credit Thanks everybody. Have a great day.